Hi there, this is Billy. I want to show you my latest creation, a micro Python game system using ESP8266, Nook MCU D1, which is this chip, plus the I2C version, no, not I2C, uh, the SPI version of the monochrome OLED display, uh, SSD1306, so you can see there are seven pins more pins than the I2C OLED display because there are so many pins used and there's so few pins available on the ESP8266 right only D0 to D D8 available I have to do something smart with the buttons we no longer have six more pins for the buttons what I did was to use all the pins for the I, uh, for the SPI interface and only Spare the I2C pins, which is D1 and D2 for GPIO 5 and GPIO 4. These two pins I use to control the multiplex function for the switches. That means the switches are connected through the resistors of different values, so we can easily detect up, down, left, right, A and B uh, by sensing the voltage divider value of um, these buttons those are fit into the AO analog to digital interface and then we can play the game let me reset So this is the menu. I created a menu system under MicroPython. When the main.py is run, it will call this menus.mpy. I'm com a pre-compiled version of the Python code into a thing called bytecode or a frozen code. So it will be more efficient to run in a small memory of the ESP8266. ESP8266 only have 32K of a real memory, the real uh, dynamic memory. Although he has 4 meg or even some 60 meg, those are considered static memory. That's only usable for storing files or program codes that are dormant. So it's good to compile that into the MPY bytecode. You use the MPY clause compiler to pre-compile that. Once you did that, you will uh, kind of resolve the memory issue of ESP8266 when running the MicroPython text files. Because when you run the MicroPython text files, a lot of memory is being used to load the text file itself. And for the compiler of uh, the interpreter of the MicroPython to work, so you lift very little memory and you it will easily run out of memory. So to fix that, you, you have to uh, use the mpy closed the pre-compiler, to uh, convert the text file, the text program code into a byte code, which will save a lot of memory. And the other good thing about byte code is the program will be executed from the flash memory or the static memory. And you can leave the 32K of uh, dynamic memory for your variable, for your data. Okay, so. I can play this button to navigate the menu. Let me show you my button test. So I use the A0, the analog to digital sensor, to read the value of these buttons. For U is about a value of 136, for down 557. Five, so there's a tolerance between 10 and 20. Left. 260 something right 420 something and then the A 680 something and B 878 you may ask what if I press both down and A or down and B right you will also be detectable because that will give you a different values 640 something and then the B button also you can sense multiple button using just that one one uh, 
right? And then at the same time, you can also multiplex the same analog to digital sensor uh, converter to read the value of your pedal. So even if I press this button or not, the pedal value on the right of the screen will not change, right? You can still freely rotate and get the right value. So you can you can play some games with the pedal and use the pack button at the same time. Okay, so let me show you. Let me press this button to go back. Uh, L and A to go back. Okay. Now let's play the breakout games. So the breakout games I can use either the button by pressing the A to choose button and then I can use the button to navigate my pedal like batch or I can now try to use the B button to play with this pedal let me show you the B button see I can play the pedal very easily Then I also created a demo mode by pressing the down button. I enter the demo mode, and then the AI will play for me. Let me make it closer. I tune the frame rate to start about 60 frames per second because we are using the SPI interface for the display. Uh, the CPU can run faster, and the hardware SPI of ESP8266 is doing the magic right it do the hardware spi transfer on the pixels to the uh, ssd1306 at the background uh, not using too much cpu cycle so we can leave the cpu cycle for the software and the logic of the game to run and hence it is running very fast i have measured the maximum frame rate for this game will be 115 frames per second Okay, uh, if you compare with the i to c interface of the SSD1306, the maximum frame rate will be less than 20 frames per second. So it's really worth the sacrifice to, to have less pin for the buttons and more pins used for the, I, uh, the SPI display to get this faster speed. Okay, so let me stop the demo. Go back. And I'll show you another game, the uh, snake game. And I play slow for the time being. So we need to catch the apple. Oh, I'm so poor. This is how it's played. And if I go to fast mode, it will be very fast. Okay. Let me exit. The other thing you can do with this is since I multiplex the I to C pins. And uh, GPI 04 and 5, you control the buttons or the pedal. I can also multiplex this to control the I to C interface that are connected. So let me put in this dual point cable. Uh, that's for the uh, light meter and also the humidity and temperature sensor. I use the SXT 24. 
twenty, SX three twenty. This one with the light and humidity, uh, temperature and humidity sensor SXT twenty. It is much more accurate than the uh, DXT eleven or DXT twenty two, and it can capture sub zero temperature, minus fifty degree, and up to positive one hundred twenty five Celsius. So it's very good. Same price as the DXT twenty two. Yeah. And then the other eye to see in the face card I use is this. PH1750 is a lux meter. It's measuring the intensity of the light. Okay. It's the uh, pin layout. On the top, there's the SPI OLED interface. At the bottom, you can see the D1 and D2 used to control whether to reach the analog or digital converter values from the buttons or uh, from the pedal. And then the last, very last bottom is how you connect the different buttons uh, in series with uh, resistors of different value. And then the other end of the button will connect to AO, the A0, the, the analog to digital converter. Let me show you how the humidity light meter and temperature sensor works. So I'll click this button to launch. And then you see that it's getting the time and dates from the NTP server through the Wi-Fi connection the clock is running and the lux meter is from this PH1750 sensor so if I uh, I block the light sensor it's taking measurement every 5 seconds and then the, the lux goes down to 16 if I remove it after five seconds, you see it goes up to 198. And then there's the temperature and humidity sensor. This is the one. If I press my hand on it, temperature will go up. Right. If I blow some air into it. Humidity will go up. Go up, keep going up. And then I also have this button to control the LED. And this is also controllable from the MQTT dashboard in adafruits.io website. Okay, and then we can also exit back to the main menu. So this thing is, is very good. Okay, that's all I have for today. Uh, I will show you more how to make this in the next video and show you how to start using MicroPython, which is a version of Python that can be used on microcontrollers and IoT, IoT projects. If you like the video, please subscribe and send to your friends to subscribe too. See you. Bye now.